Okay, this short presentation is going to look at how to answer a challenging redox titration question from the F325 June 2012 paper. The first question, or the first part of the question that we're going to look at, question 7 part A, is uh, sort of surprisingly missed by quite a few students as they don't seem to realise there's a, actually a question there. So if you look at part A, it says in step 1, a redox reaction takes place. Add the correct number of electrons to the correct sides of the incomplete oxidation and reduction half equations below. This question can appear quite intimidating at first because it seems quite, it's quite tough to figure out what to do. But the key is to remember, half equations show electrons. Now if you look at the left hand side of the first equation, we can see we've got four OH minuses, so we've got a total charge on the left-hand side of minus four. If we look on the right-hand side, we have a total charge of just minus two. So we need the charges to balance. The way we do it is by balancing it with two electrons. Now we have minus four on both sides. Same applies to the bottom one. Minus seven on the left-hand side, and only at the moment minus one. So we need to balance that up by adding six electrons and we are done okay part B really really tough A star question in step 2 an equilibrium is set up 3 MnO4 minus 2 plus 2 waters makes 2 MnO4 minus MnO2 and 4 OH minuses the equilibrium position can be shifted by bubbling carbon dioxide gas through the mixture. Suggest with the aid of an equation how the equilibrium position shifts. Now, it's not on the specification, really, uh, but the key to this is realising something about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is acidic. It reacts with water to make carbonic acid. And although you don't need the equation, your first mark is for recognising that carbon dioxide is an acidic gas. Now, a big source of error that a lot of students make here is they go, OK, right, water's being used up, so that's going to shift the equilibrium to the left-hand side. But there's something important about water that is very often missed. It says bubbled through the mixture. The MnO4 2 minus is aqueous, the MnO4 minus is aqueous, the OH minus is aqueous. Water is present in excess, in massive excess. So although we're using up some water, we're really hardly going to, there's going to be no change in the overall concentration of water. So that isn't really going to affect the equilibrium. If you wanted to think about it from an order of reaction point of view, water would be zero order, because there's so much of it, its concentration doesn't actually change. So what does change? Well, we've made an acid, H2CO3. That is going to react with our base. And what's that going to make? It's going to make water. And it's going to make, well, if you want to be nice and simple, some hydrogen carbonate ions. There is your second mark. What does that do? It pushes the equilibrium to the right-hand side to replace the OH minus that has been used up, and that is your third mark. Not many people get any marks on that question. Okay, so then we get on to our proper redox titration question, and this is an absolute standard redox titration question. This is the kind of question that students are going into the exam ready to face. Used to be more of a, considered more of a challenge, but this type of question now Students have got enough past paper practice to do well at this, so as a result, the impact of these questions have come down. They're not as hard as they used to be. Key thing is collecting the information. We are always interested in, one, the moles from the titer, two, the ratios, three, the scaling, four, what are we actually trying to figure out? And five, the question. Sounds like a bit of a daft thing to say, but these things are very important for us to consider. Okay, so, step one. We want to find the moles from the titer. Well, the end point 
is 26.2, the concentration is 0.02, so 26.2 over 1000 times by 0 0.02 equals 0.00524 moles, and that is moles of manganate. First mark in the back, what do we do? Well, write it above it or make a note of it as far as the chemical equation is concerned. Because what are we actually trying to analyse? We're trying to determine the percentage purity of sodium sulphite. And you can see, two moles of manganate reacts with five moles of sulphite. So, we need to do that ratio. So I'm going to divide by two and times it by five. And my ratio gets me 0 0.001. 1 moles. It's important to keep track of what we're figuring out so we now know we've got 0 0.00131 moles of sodium sulfide in our titration. We analysed 25 centimetres cubed of sodium sulfide but that was out of a total of 100. So I'm now going to times it by 4 to find out how many moles were in that 100 centimetres cubed and that comes to 0 0.00524 OK, so the fourth step is we have to now work out what to do with those number of moles. We know we've got 0 0.00524 moles of sulphite, but the question is asking us for the percentage purity of sodium sulphite. So we need to convert moles into grams. Why do we do that? Well, we're told we started with 0 0.720 grams of sodium sulfite. Grams equals moles uh, times MR. So we've got 0 0.00524 times that by the MR, which is 126. And that will give us our fourth mark, which comes to, oops, which comes to 0 0.66 Zero two four grams. Mark number four in the bag. Percentage purity, well, we've got that number of grams, but we started with 0 0.720 times by 100, and we get our final percentage divided by 0 0.72, which is 91.8%. Five marks in the back.